Hi, I'm Tree, and today on Stitchless TV, I'm going to show you how you can make designer looking fabric using old clothes. Now for our fabric today, we're going to use an old skirt, a top that's got a few stains in the armpit, and a towel. It's a good idea to use fabrics that are of the same colour but different textures. So to begin with we need to deconstruct our garments and, and bring them back to being pieces of fabric. Now for speed purposes I'm not going to unpick this but usually I would. I feel bad cutting through it, but I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to cut up the back seam. Now whenever I cut up clothes, it does give me a bit of a horrible, resistant feeling. But you just got to be confident that what you're going to end up with is going to be nicer. Or more wearable, you get more use out of it. So I've just cut up the back seam there, but I'm not going to cut through the top yet. And then I'm going to cut as close as I can to the waistband, but I'm not going to cut on top of the waistband because I might use that for a collar later on. So I'm just going to cut a little bit away. Now my skirt's got these box pleats which open out. So I'm going to go all around the waistband and just chop it off. So after cutting off the waistband and cutting up the, the back seam, now I'm saving this zip because it's a nice zip, nice zip and I'm saving the waistband because I know I can use it as a collar. So you end up with this. Now I did undo the hem because it was very easy to undo because it had a fine uh, thread blind stitch. So the next thing that I would say is I want to get the fabric into some sort of squares or rectangles so I need to pay attention to the grain and if you've got some sort of set square where it's easy for you to square off edges I think you should get it out now but I'm going to use this cutting mat as a guide so look, I haven't cut off the pockets yet because I don't quite know what's happening yet with them. But what I do know is that I need to get the fabric going down the grain and squared off a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut down here. Now obviously I should be using <laughs> this cutting mat as a cutting mat. And maybe I should be using a roller blade. So all you quarters out there will be like, what? So I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. So that's one piece. So I'm going to fold that over, put it to one side for now. Now let's look at the, the back of the skirt. So the back of the skirt is, is going out. In a kind of a-line shape so if I just I know that the center back is going to be straight and down the grain so I'm just going to see what happens if I just fold it over does that help me make it squared off and then I'm going to cut down there so these pieces I might use as well later on but I don't need them at the moment so I'm going to do that to the other side of the back as well and start looking um, at how you might, the proportions that you might put your fabrics together from, from the other pieces of clothing. So at the moment I'm thinking, well at this stage, do I want them to be this wide or do I want them to be different widths? So I'm just kind of thinking about that at the moment. 
So when I do a project like this, I'm very attentive to any details that will be on any of the clothes or pieces of linen that I'd use. And so there's one that's particularly screaming out at me at the moment, which is this lovely piece here. So before anything else, I'm going to cut a seam allowance away from that, that detail. So it does appear at both ends of the tail, so I'll do it at the other end as well. So look, these two pieces are really very nice with the stripes on them. So they're almost like haberdashery now. So I won't be incorporating them, or I don't know, or maybe I am, in making our designer fabric, because I might use them on the finished garment afterwards, but I'm not sure yet, because I'm making it up as I go. So I'm gonna put those to one side. Now also, the edges of the tail are too good to be missed because they've got a nice finished off edge on them. So they might end up becoming a, a frilly bit of haberdashery as well. So I'm gonna put those to one side at the moment too. Now also, I wanna think about the proportions. Now it is probably, it's not all gonna be strips. It's all gonna be like chopped up and turned around and stuff like that. But something else to think about is, you know, do I want, do I want the width of this to be exactly the same proportion as the kind of brocadey fabric or do I want it to be different or do I want it to be random so that's something that I'm going to go away and think about now this is as far as I've got with this <laughs> so I thought maybe we should start looking at the the blouse now when I do frills I usually use thin fabric fold it over so I don't have to finish off the edge because that's quite time-consuming and I think what I'm going to do for this is not put them in the full length of it maybe put it sort of ran randomly here and there in the seams so I've cut down half the width so by the time I gather it and I will show you that by the time I gather it and I trap it in the seam it's going to bring a really nice bit of detail, look. So let's begin with me just showing you how to simply, if you don't have a gather foot or a ruffler foot, how to easily gather. So we've got a nice finished off edge because we've used the existing edge or we've pressed and folded over our fabric yeah so you want to be like a seam allowance away from the edge and you do not go backwards and forwards you sew oops, coming down your fabric now this doesn't need to be really precise you're not actually making a garment yet <laughs> So all the way down, using your largest stitch, straight stitch. And then when you get near the end, don't go backwards and forwards. Lift up your needle, lift up your foot, wiggle, and leave a long thread. So you're just going to take one thread not both threads you're going to ease your fabric a bit and push it along like that so you start to get a kind of ruffle going on so so do that all the way down your strip so remember to put your uh, stitch size back to a normal size and now you'll probably pin yours or use clips or something but I'm just going to go straight in and sew and I'm going to try really hard not to get in the way. So I've put my needle in so everything's held in place and it won't move. Now sewing frills, it is easy but you need to control the gatheredy bits and make sure that they don't 
accidentally go underneath. So you can just use like a stay stitch. So just use like a size three and stitch your frill on. You don't need to go forwards and back at the moment because you're just simply holding this in place and controlling your frillage. So you see how I'm like fiddling about with the frills because they kind of want to tuck underneath. And I sew in the well of my gathered line. So keep doing that all the way to the end of your frill. So I should say, if I didn't do such a small seam allowance when I did the gather line, it wouldn't keep tucking under so much. So do yourself a favour, if you've got enough fabric, use, you know, like a decent size seam allowance for when you do that gathering. Now I'm coming to the end. And I don't need to go backwards and forwards, but I will. So line up your fabrics and put them right sides together. Now, because I am sewing with this um, toweling, ah, toweling fabric, I am going to need a bit of support with, with pins or clips. So I'm just going to go and find mine. So when you're uh, pinning, I'm pinning um, the toweling to the fabric, make sure you squash that frill out of the way, make it be all nice and flat underneath, and get your pins, if you don't know this already, to go in horizontally so you can easily take them out, and also so you can sew from the other side as well actually. Put the last one in there. Now, sometimes what I say is, if you're sewing two different fabrics together, it can be a good idea to do a slight zigzag stitch, like you would with stretch fabric. It really does seem to help. But in this situation, I think I'm just going to use a medium size straight stitch. And I think I'm going to put the toweling on the bottom for two reasons. One, because it's tricky to sew and it might get caught underneath my sewing foot. But also, so I can see the line of where I, I stitched the frill on. So let's see how we get on. I am going to go backwards and forwards now. So that does seem to be okay. Look, because I did them horizontally, it doesn't matter which side I pinned, because I can see them and I pull them out before I get to them. And when you sew different fabrics together, you usually have to do a little bit of like easing, you know, and planning before you actually stitch the bit to make sure that it fits. But this isn't too bad, so I think that's probably a good tip <laughs> to put your tricky fabric underneath and just pretend it's not there. I'm going to go all the way down to the end and I'm going to make sure I sew in the well of the stitch line from where I sewed my frilling. So we do need to press it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be like top stitching it down there to kind of reinforce it a bit more. I'm not sure about that yet, but I know I'm going to be pressing it. But I just want to say this, usually if you've got a fabric heavier than the other, it's going to want to go flat, yeah? So, you know, I can, I can try and and make the thicker fabric fold back that way but it feels like I think it does anyway <laughs> it feels like it wants to go this way yeah so that will determine which way the frill the frill lays so I don't know if this is too much information or not but um, it is something to think about so when I go and add my my next piece on you know I'm, I think it's a bit predictable for me to go and add a frill in there so I may not do that but I'm still not sure yet 
So these are decisions that you're going to have to make because I can't make them for you. But I, I kind of feel like maybe I don't need to do that because I want it to be a bit more random. So I think for the next bit, I'm just going to go straight in and attach it. Right, so this is what I've got so far. And I'm just going to keep going with it. Now in terms of the width, how, how to decide how wide I want it to be, I've actually got a pattern in my head that I'm going to be using. So I am bearing that in mind, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> so you're going to have to decide about that. Now it was my intention to also cut my fabric down here and turn it around and have it going in the opposite direction as well, but I'm not sure about that yet. So for the moment, I'm just going to keep doing this until I end up with a, a, a length of fabric. But you probably want to know how to finish off. So I would say either you could um, zigzag these seams or obviously you could overlock them. Now I've got toweling, I definitely need to finish them off in some way. I'm just not sure how yet. So I think before I'm going to finish off the seams, I will definitely press it so I can see what it looks like and how it wants to lay. And I'm still deciding if I want to do some sort of top stitch on here. So just keep going. Do what we've just done and just keep going. So I'm going to move slowly because I want you to see what we have so far. So just so I can give you some sense of what it could become. Now I've draped this deliberately in the shape of the thing that I think I'm going to be making with it. Thank you so much for watching. See you again very soon. Right, I've got to finish this now. Bye.